Episode 1 Millie is pumped to be competing again, while Priya is more into the idea of being her coach. They both studied hard, spending countless nights watching the old seasons and pointing out good strategies. Millie's favorite? Cameron's from Season 4, predictably. But she can't float this time. Lauren is really trying hard to keep it together. People remember her this time and try to avoid her, but she persists on being happy-go-lucky, kinda like nice Heather from Moon Madness of All Stars, keeping in all of her psychotic tendencies. The teams are named this time by their team captains. Bowie chooses Team Delicious, while Priya decides on Team Crush It. It's better than Skunk Button Rat Face. Julia attempts to strike up an alliance with MK, but MK is not only still salty about getting the boot last season from her, but also doesn't trust her. Nichelle spends the entire episode rubbing her newfound skills in everyone's faces, but at the end of the challenge, she gets ballooned just before she can hit the finish, and Bowie wins, earning some trust towards Julia, who took the dive to help the team win. MK also notes this, but still isn't sure about the blonde. During the challenge, Z's soda doesn't get him eliminated. He sips it and gets sprayed in the face, which knocks him back and gets him detected. I always thought it was really stupid how his soda was the thing that moved, and therefore he gets detected. So I rectified that. Chase actually performs a trick shot with a balloon, which gets an enemy opponent out instead. Let's say... Millie. This time, Priya doesn't scream and run toward her like an idiot. Lastly, Damien doesn't freak out. He's too busy calculating his next move, gets distracted by Ripper making fun of him, and then gets hit in the face. At the elimination ceremony, Millie points out that the cocky players always lose early, to which Nichelle has a manic outburst. Oh, so I'm cancelable, huh? Me, Nichelle LaDonna, and not any of you? Well, I did my homework. Priya, your parents are complete psychopaths who have been recorded throwing vases at minimum wage employees. Z, the soda you're advertising is chlorinated. And Emily, I saw that video where you said chinky eyes. That's racist. It's not racist, it's a description. D didn't you see the follow-up apology video? You want to vote me out? Fine. Just know that not everybody on this team is who they seem. And so they do. Episode 2. Millie and Priya crush this challenge to make up for last time, while Ripper tries to impress Axel, who he has a crush on. He admits that he's had a crush on her since season 1, though back then he described it as weak feelings established by the woke hive mind. In general, this challenge isn't hard for Team Crush It because they're so laser-focused. The other team struggles simply because they're just better. Also because Emily sabotages them by getting chased to film his video intro like a thousand times. Julia continues trying to convince MK to join her side, telling her that people don't trust her just as much as they didn't trust her before the dive incident. She fills her head with lies, like how Bowie called her a little sneak behind her back, which MK only half buys. She's smarter than she seems. As usual, Chase is eliminated, going out as silly as he did in the original. Millie doesn't crush Damien. Lauren doesn't even do it, as tempted as she is to crush somebody in those gears. Instead, she jumps in and scores them four points, wanting to feel some kind of pain from something after holding back for two whole days. Masochism works out. Her team is super freaked out by her, but Julia sees her as easy to coerce, so she asks her to vote MK with her to scare her into thinking she's a big target. She agrees. Chase ends up going home, but when MK gets bottom two, she realizes Julia may have a point. Z drops his soda sponsor and vows to never sell out again. Episode 3 MK confronts Julia about her proposal and finally asks to join her alliance. Julia, cocky, accepts her with a bit of mockery. Julia comes up with the idea to have Lauren join them as well. MK isn't so sure, and tells her that this is a bad idea. Julia says that she's fragile, so she's perfect to coerce into voting with them. Lauren is, of course, eager to have allies and friends to get along with, especially as her mental health declines. During the challenge, however, when Bowie, Raj, and Wayne split up from MK, Julia, and Lauren after regrettably cheating, Lauren can't help herself. Alone in the woods with two people and no witnesses? It's a psycho's dream come true! She ends up costing them the challenge when she tries to kill them like she did to Damien last season. Caleb drives a wedge between Priya and Millie, basically taking up all of Priya's attention as her crush on him has solidified. Millie tries to talk to Priya, but Caleb is constantly talking over and interrupting her. Priya is crushing a little too hard to notice and dotes on him the entire challenge. After they win, they have a celebratory hug while Caleb winks to Millie, revealing his evil. 
He wins them the challenge, though. Millie tries to convince Priya she's getting Alejandro'd. Or worse, Justined! And Priya tells her that there's nothing to worry about because Caleb is more of a Trent than either. Besides, he got voted out first last time. It's okay. But Millie knows the truth. Emily spends the challenge with Z. She vents to him about Chase and how nice it is to be away from him, and... Let me stop you right there. Me and Chase? We're tight. But I get it. A woman's got her needs, and between you and I, he wasn't satisfying any of them. Emily's like, yeah, I know. Wait, are you taking his side? Z replies, no way. I just think maybe since Chase is gone now, you can focus on other things like yourself. What's your vibe, Em? We got 30 minutes and a whole lot of walking to kill. So they talk, a lot. She reveals her hobbies, her interests, and her goals for the money. They both find Olivia Von Trash Panda and adopt her. Emily admits that all of Chase's friends suck, except for Z. He's really cool. Ripper and Axel don't need changing, but it is worth it to mention that he helps her team win when his ass launches her to the finish line. Damien hangs with Caleb's group and decides that he's a cool dude, but there isn't much more to him in this one. At the elimination ceremony, Julia admits MK was right and they both vote Scary Girl. Wayne and Raj vote Julia since she cheated. Bowie votes Ripper because he cost them the challenge, Ripper votes Scary Girl because she lost the challenge, and Scary Girl votes Julia since she got away. A tiebreaker is held between Julia and Lauren, in which they both must foot race from the bonfire to the dock, and whoever loses gets eliminated. Julia wins by a landslide because Lauren is more focused on slowly Michael Myers walking towards her for the kill. By the time Lauren catches up and holds up her knife, she's dragged away, waving bye as she goes. Yep, Lauren is back. Now I personally think episode 4 is perfect, but with that being said, Emily is a people person and therefore does well in this challenge. However, Team Delicious has the power of cheating on their side, as MK is insanely useful in this one. Wayne and Raj are none the wiser, as Bowie tries to keep them occupied before they get a turn and get eliminated, since they're not great at guessing people's stuff. Z and Emily have basically become best friends since last episode, and Emily feels... free. Almost like she no longer has to think about Chase. And yet, she still feels like she's burning him by being so close to one of his best friends. This puts an idea in her head, but that'll come back later. Millie tries to warn Priya about Caleb again, but before she does, Priya tells her she's sitting with Caleb at breakfast today. Millie, dejected, sits with Damien and asks him for some advice. He tells her that Caleb's a stand-up dude and that Millie's probably just not used to having friends yet. Millie laments this and Damien says he'll keep a lookout just in case, but to try being more trusting as everyone else gave her a chance after she wrote about them in her journal. She decides he's right. Ripper and Axel are unchanged. They are perfect. In the end, Emily nearly wins the challenge, but Chase throws her off and she loses, just like in the original, while Bowie cheats his way all the way to victory. Yet it feels... wrong. Before the elimination ceremony, Priya and Caleb are alone, sitting at the dock. Priya explains that this reminds her a lot of Trent and Gwen from Season 1, who didn't go out on good terms. She has an awkward spaghetti moment where she stumbles over her words and further explains that she knows why they didn't work and how they could have. Caleb asks if that means she likes him, and if she'd like to maybe share her first kiss with him. She blushes but falls for it, all of which Millie sees. Caleb reveals in a confessional that it worked. They're in an alliance at last. Millie is spying on the confessional and tries to tell Priya at the elimination ceremony that Caleb is playing her. Her evidence, however, is fickle. Priya still wants to believe Millie and trust her, so she turns to Caleb and asks him, Is... is it true? He takes her hand and leans into her, instantly making her heart skip a beat. He tells her that, I would never ever take a beautiful woman like you for granted. Unlike some people. Millie frantically tries to explain herself, but with no evidence, even Damien is tight-lipped. The votes are near unanimous. Priya votes for Emily, while Millie votes for Caleb but everyone else votes for Millie. Priya laments that she failed as a mentor and that she's so sorry that it came down to this. Millie tells her that she wasn't ever trying to make Priya unhappy, she just knows things she can't prove. She just tells Priya to be careful. Extra careful. Priya and Millie hug before she's sent off. Caleb waves her goodbye with a smirk, comforting a crying Priya. Oh, and then Ripper performs his poem on Axel and they get together. Hell yes. 
Episode 5 Ripper and Axel ended up spending the night together, having a picnic under the stars before fuggin' and become an official. Axel wanted to take it slow, but their hearts said otherwise. Still, once the sun shows up, she makes it clear that the competition is what matters most. After the show, they'll need a place to hang out, and if a bomb ever drops, a fallout shelter is the perfect home, so she has to win the money to afford that. Ripper agrees? He's just happy making her happy. Bowie tries to tell Julia he's done cheating, like in the original, but she brushes him off and says if she needs him to cheat, he has to. MK agrees before drawing the map on Ripper's stomach to help them cheat. MK and Julia's bond clearly stronger now. Wayne and Raj are still none the wiser, but at breakfast they talk about how they crushed the last challenge and are ready to crush the next, making Bowie feel even worse. Caleb and Priya, now officially a couple as well, spend the day together before the challenge, getting to know each other better. This results in Caleb actually feeling bad about getting Millie eliminated, even if it was for the greater good, and starts developing a bond with Priya. Not feelings, and he's still hyper-focused on winning, but he thinks she's more than just a challenger now. Emily confesses to Z that no guy has ever been this sweet to her, and she was wondering if he's ever had a girlfriend. He gives her a response like, I've had tons of girlfriends, yeah. They were all super sweet. My best girlfriend is Mary Jane though. Have you met her? Then the challenge starts before she can develop her plan further. In a confessional, she tells the viewers that she has a plan to date Z so Chase feels jealous. She's never gone this petty before, but somehow it feels so insanely good to indulge in it. At the same time, Z gets to have her as his girlfriend. Win-win. Damien is kind of paranoid about Caleb, but he ends up getting sidelined during the challenge due to this distraction, when Ripper bullies him into slipping around on the ice and losing his coin. MK's cheating helps the team win, and the challenge is mainly unchanged, except now Crush It has to work together in order to complete the challenge, instead of relying on Nichelle to do it for them. They still lose because of Delicious's cheating, using Ripper's stomach to create a map of the maze. During the challenge, Emily tries to ask Z more questions about his experiences dating, but every question is kind of a curveball for him. Have you ever gone on a date? Yeah, every day! Have you ever spoon-fed a girl? Does my baby sister count? Etc. Because of the map, Team Delicious cruises through the challenge and beats out Crush It during the race to the docks. However, now that Wayne and Raj know damn well that they cheated in not only this challenge, but also the last, they decide they can't take it anymore and tell Chris that the only reason they won was because MK and Julia were cheating. Julia's not going down alone. Hey, don't just single us out. Bowie was so in on it too. And behind your backs. So sad. Raj and Wayne feel utterly betrayed, but especially Raj. He begs for Bowie to say it ain't so, but Bowie confesses the truth and apologizes to Raj. In turn, Chris decides that Team Crush It wins the challenge. Julia and MK know damn well that one of the spineless hockey bros has to go, while Ripper is behind them. Axel is furious he cheated, but forgives him as long as he's honest with her for the rest of the game. He's so scared of losing her that he nods, absolutely. Bowie says to Raj that they can vote out the girls, whichever one he wants, but Raj is kind of just... dejected. Bowie can't lose his boyfriend yet. Not until he can make things right. So he talks with Julia and MK and pleads with them to vote out Wayne. They agree. Thus, Wayne is eliminated. Raj is devastated and says a tearful goodbye to Wayne, who instructs Raj to win for them and bring fairness back to the game. Raj copies. Luckily for him though, Chris has a surprise. A team swap. Raj and Axel, pack your bags. You two are swapping teams. Episode 6 Chris announces a new element to the game. Somewhere, hidden on the island, is an immunity idol. Priya talks about how all the times an immunity idol has been played, it was a villain using it to save themselves. This time, she'd like to be the first hero to use one. Caleb says he'll help her find it, and the two do more cute bonding. Emily gets inspired and takes Priya aside for some advice. Priya is super psyched to be a love guru despite knowing nothing about love and asks what's up. Emily explains she thinks she has a crush on Z. Priya says they'd be adorable together. All Emily needs to do is let Z do things for her. Predictably, this will go hijinxy. Raj ends up listening to a sad song on repeat for hours while thinking about missing Wayne, before Bowie snaps him out of it. He tries to explain that even though they're on separate teams and Wayne is gone, he'll still be there for him, and this time, for real, no more cheating. Raj is happy to hear that, but says he needs to be able to trust he'll play fair 
spitting on his hand to offer a firm, professional handshake. Bowie spits on his own, reluctantly, and they shake on it. Bowie wishes him luck, kissing him on the cheek before sitting with his team at breakfast. Damien and Z introduce Raj to their customs, accepting him as a new member of their friendship and team. Raj is ecstatic to make new teammates. Ripper and Axel gloat to the other team that they're stronger than ever now that they have the strongest player. So strong, in fact, that we don't need to cheat, right guys? MK and Julia play dumb and insist they never cheated in the first place. Chris rubs it in MK's face that he knew all about the intern thing before the challenge starts. Each contestant partners up with someone from their team, except MK, who will be teamed up with no one as her punishment for posing as an intern. The teams are... Julia and Bowie, who decide they're the only options they have after Ripper and Axel team up. Priya and Caleb, obviously. Emily asks Z, who's more than happy to be her partner. And Damien asks Raj, to which Raj cheers in his team's battle cry. Damien tries to imitate it and... kinda does. During the walk towards the second part of the challenge through the forest, Emily asks Z to carry the canoe for her. He accepts and can't because it's too heavy. When they come across some mud, she asks if he can help her over it, but he ends up dropping the canoe on both of them and getting them both muddy in an attempt to swim past it. She gives up and both of them continue onward, dirty. Priya and Caleb get to the challenge first. Raj and Bowie hype each other up and do some trash talking as well, getting into the competitive spirit while remaining friendly rivals. Damien tries to get in on it, but his disses suck, so Ripper and Axel roast him back. Damien is frustrated, but has no real comeback, so he ignores them while Raj owns them himself. It works, and Ripper and Axel back off. Damien thanks Raj. MK gets dead last, struggling immensely. She gets partnered with a bear as usual, and gets her karma when it beats on her in the second part of the challenge with boxing gloves. Speaking of, the second part of the challenge remains the same, only now the goal is to have the strongest person on your team fight the strongest person on the other team. This is decided through a fight between each partner. Caleb and Priya have fun with their jousting match, but Caleb ultimately wins. Despite needing to focus on the game because he's their strongest player, he offers to help Priya look for the immunity idol in the woods. She agrees, knowing her priorities are all messed up, but come on, she's already won a million dollars, why not? Her team is not pleased. Ripper tries to get himself and Axel different opponents, but she takes him out with ease. She reassures him that they'll make up. Damien and Raj fight, and surprisingly Damien is able to beat him. Julia and Bowie have a super grudge match, with Bowie just barely losing after breaking Julia's nose. He says whatever happens next is worth it for the damage he's done to her face. MK loses to the bear, obviously, and gets drain damage. Julia and Axel fight for the crown, and Axel takes it with ease, proving she's the strongest on their team after all. Emily laments that she doesn't want to hurt Z, and so Z says she can take it. He's not too strong anyways. Butterflies. Emily knocks him out and thanks him. Between Emily and Damien, Emily tries to get super competitive, reflecting on all the times Chase would pwn her in video games. Not this time. She goes in for the kill, but Damien's reflexes end up being tighter, as he roleplays he's fighting some kind of she-beast from Dungeons and Dragons. He wins. It's Axel versus Damien now that Chris can't seem to find Priya and Caleb, so... Final round for immunity! Axel rubs it in his face that he can't even handle getting roasted, so he's toast against her physically. Meanwhile, in the woods, Caleb talks about how his parents have set a path for him he doesn't want to take. Priya replies that she shares a similar story, and admits that she had no idea they were so similar. Priya admits that Millie made a lot of good points against her parents, being the tipping point in her decision to move out into a place with her bestie. She thinks Caleb should do the same. He gets really guilty all of a sudden and confesses that, At first, I just wanted to be alliance mates with you, and I was actually using you, but soon enough, I realized you're so much more than just a pretty face. Priya is dead quiet. You what? Millie was right? And I just ignored her? You were using me? I was, but now I really do like you. A pit forms in her stomach. Priya yells at Caleb, telling him their relationship is built on lies before crying and running away. Caleb sighs, wanting to chase after her, but instead going back to see how the challenge is going. Damien and Axel, on horseback, do the final challenge. Like in canon, Damien gets a surge of motivation, this time when Ripper craps all over Damien and praises his all-powerful queen. Damien ends up getting the hit in, the very hit that knocks Axel's tooth out. He wins immunity, 
While MK rests in the infirmary, Julia helps feed her and tells her that Bowie is a complete liability. If they're getting anyone out, it's gotta be him. She's already convinced Ripper and Axel to vote with her. MK agrees before passing out again. Julia just wants him out because he broke her nose, really. At dinner, Priya cries while Emily, Z, Damien, and Raj comfort her. Caleb is super unpopular now, as Priya told them everything. He realizes that telling her may have been the wrong move. But at least he's immune for now? He just feels dirty though, and for the first time ever, lonely. At the elimination ceremony, we say an unsurprising goodbye to Bowie. Raj stops him before he goes and begs him not to leave. Bowie gives him a good pep talk, telling him that he has to win so he can tell people his boyfriend is a millionaire. Raj gives him a parting gift, his mouth guard, before Bowie heads home. Episode 7 Caleb works on finding the immunity idol and runs into Damien, who secretly has it. He stink eyes him and tries to be intimidating, using hockey slang Raj taught him. Caleb is more confused than anything, which ends up working. He tries to explain himself only for Damien to tell him to talk to the hand before walking away. Damien reveals in the confessional that he has the idol and admits that he's very anxious about keeping it. Emily takes a deep breath. No more dawdling, it's time to confess to Z. She walks up to him. Z, I like you. Aw, sweet dude. I like you too. So proud of you for making it so far without Chase dragging you down. No, no, Z, I... Here. She kisses him, passionately. He's shocked. Do you get it now? No? Z sees what they did as cheating on Chase, breaking the bro code, all that. Emily assures him that she's no longer with Chase. They've been broken up for almost an entire year. She asks if he likes her back, and he says, He doesn't know! Awkward. Ripper and Axel are exchanging poems in their cabin before MK and Julia come in and gag from the affection they spew. As they're heading back out, they talk about merging and where they go from there. Julia says they stick together all the way to the final two, but MK says that they probably won't make it that far together. They are who they are, after all. Julia shrugs. That's their goal and they're sticking to it. Nobody else can win but them. MK can get behind that. Raj tries to pep Priya up like Bowie did to him, all while she cries into her pillow, conflicted and hurt. Raj does get her to compose herself, at least, and get her head back in the game. But on the subject of Caleb, she's just confused. The challenge begins, the team still together instead of dismantling after five episodes. Seriously, a five episode merge is ridiculously early. I don't think the challenge needs changing, it's a really good one. Emily is good at baking and helps her team win even better than they already do in canon. Ripper and Axel are less sexual and focus more on the challenge, though they do take time while the cake is baking to paint Ripper, which is very sexual. This is where Priya gets her yeast, like in canon. Everyone ignores Caleb and anything he says. Z tries to ask Raj what he would do if Wayne kissed Bowie after they broke up, and Raj says that all good players share the same puck, just never at the same time. In that case, we fight for it. I have to fight Chase for Emily? MK forgot to grease the pan, and her team blames her for losing the challenge. Mainly. Of course, Julia's not going to vote her off. Axel or Ripper has to go. Because their team's cake sucks so much ass, the other team wins regardless of the yeast. Oh yeah, Owen's there too, but I, I thought that was kind of obvious. I love Owen. Before the vote, Emily asks Priya for love advice again. Priya is still conflicted and basically just tells Emily to not trust a word Z says. But Emily tells her that she's sick of that. She's sick of being unsure of people and wondering if she's being treated right. She's going to be honest and go in head on. In a confessional, she admits that this crush is bigger than Chase now, and she feels awful for using Z the way she did. She wants him. Because the merge is coming soon and between the two, Axel is the biggest threat, they get behind voting her off. Ripper and Axel vote for Julia, finding her both annoying and way too powerful. It's a tie, so another tiebreaker ensues. They have to finish Team Delicious' less than delicious cake. Whoever finishes it first wins. Julia owns Axel in this challenge, scarfing the whole thing down before Axel can get even one bite in. She nearly pukes, but manages to swallow it all down. Ripper is absolutely gutted. I, I've never felt this way before. Please don't leave me. Ugh, see you later, maybe. Maybe? What does that mean? 
Axel leaves, holding back her emotions as Ripper cries out for her, extremely sad. Julia pukes as MK rubs her back. After the elimination, Emily asks Z if he wants to be with her or not. Z confesses that he has no idea. He's had plenty of partners before, but none of them ever lasted. It was always like an exploration of love, never a long time commitment. Emily says that maybe she can change that. Maybe he'd like being her boyfriend. Z says that he'd like to try it, but he can't fight Chase. That's his friend. His best friend, actually. Emily tries to tell him that Chase is an abusive user, but Z denies it, telling her that he's not bad to him. He has to think about this. Wow, love is hard. Chase was right. Emily really is explosive. Oh. Episode 8. The next episode begins with Caleb rehearsing his confession to Priya about how he went from manipulation to falling for her, while Raj listens. Raj is willing to listen to Caleb only because they're on the same team, and he doesn't want Priya to forever be sad because of him. Caleb asks Raj for any advice, to which Raj simply says, Listen to your heart, unless you mean on the field, in which case, watch out for enemies. That's it! Caleb exclaims. He's been so focused on winning Priya back, when he should be making sure those who oppose her suffer instead. Good talk, Raj. Raj gives an absent-minded thumbs up, pleased with himself. Caleb decides to stalk MK and Julia, who are looking for the immunity idol. The two talk about their contemporaries and their next scheme, with Julia determining that their biggest threats remaining are Priya and Caleb, the winner of the previous season, and her powerhouse situationship. MK agrees that Priya has got to go, but laments missing out on Caleb's muscles. Meanwhile, Ripper and Damien play cards in the mess hall. Ripper reminisces on how Axel would kick his ass at war, but before he can cry, Damien feels bad enough to start talking strategy with him to help him focus on something else. Unfortunately, the only strategy he can think of is telling Ripper he has the immunity idol. Immediately, Damien gasps and slams his hands against his mouth. The cat is out of the bag. Damien prepares to get beaten or threatened into giving it up, but Ripper just asks how a nerd like him was so good at finding it. Damien says he just found it walking in the woods, and that he's just lucky, I suppose. Ripper calls him his good luck charm, and says that their alliance will destroy the others with ease. Alliance? With you? Please, I'm so lonely! Ugh. Fine. Okay. But no more insults. No nerd. No dork. No Dorcas. Got it? Ripper nods like a puppy, while Damien sighs. Emily is giving Z some space this time, who is still totally stressed out about betraying Chase. He tries to determine in his mind, is this okay? And while having this crisis, Chris calls challenge time. Emily tries to talk to him on their way there, but Z gives her some less personal, more quiet responses. She explains in a confessional that maybe it's time to quit while she's ahead. Z is a good guy. She shouldn't be forcing him against his friend, even if his friend is a piece of shit who should feel bad. The challenge begins with Chris dropping coins on everyone and calling a merge of the teams. After he has his fun and Chef explains the pinball challenge, which rules are slightly different but we'll get to that in a minute, Julia asks Chris a question. She asks him if the immunity idol is still out there. Chris answers truthfully, stating that the idol is in possession of someone on camp. Ripper winks at a nervous Damien, while MK and Julia give each other suspicious, distrustful looks. Priya looks up at Caleb, and he looks guilty. The challenge is a little boring in the original, so I've changed it a bit. After carrying their coins to the top of the mountain, the campers have to step into giant pinballs. Inside of these pinballs, they must roll down the hill into a battle zone. The pinballs are made of rubber, and if hit enough times, will pop. The goal is to avoid getting popped and be the last one standing, or to pop as many of your opponent's pinballs as possible. For today is a double elimination and a double immunity day. Hilarity ensues up the mountain. What's important is that Z continues blanking Emily to focus on rolling his coin up, Raj gets first place with an iron focus and Wayne cheering him on in his head like those angel devil skits in cartoons, Caleb purposely falls behind so he can taunt MK and Julia loud enough for Priya to hear but not care, and Damien stays close to Ripper, urging him not to tell anyone that he's the one with the immunity idol. Ripper assures him he's in good, sweaty hands. Raj gets there first. He finds out that first, second, and third place have stronger and bigger pinballs than the other placements. But feeling like this is an unfair advantage, he declares that he wants the weaker fourth place one. Chef shrugs and just gives it to him before Raj rolls down the hill. 
eager to puck. Next is Priya, who confesses that Caleb sticking behind to assist her and piss off the villainous competition was nice, but she catches herself and tells herself to focus. She takes the first place ball with enthusiasm. Her and Raj face off, but both of them are formidable enough to last until third and fourth show up, Ripper and Damien. They take the last strong ones and come down to eliminate Raj together, cornering him before popping his bubble and launching him into the sea. He gets Wayne's plot from canon, since it's pretty funny as a less serious, more comedic side story. Z is next, getting excited for the first time all day about how pinball is one of his favorite arcade games. Emily, out of breath, tries to relate to him, telling him how when she was a kid, her dad would take her to the arcade and play games with her. They share a small bonding moment until Z realizes what he's doing and frantically jumps into a pinball, rolling down the hill. Emily sighs, repeating this. Priya is excited to burst the next ball, assuming it to be Caleb, but then she realizes it's Emily and starts to worry. Not about Caleb's safety, but about if she's not the one who crushes him to dust. Caleb basically got squished by Julia rolling her coin down onto him, buying MK time to get up the mountain and utilize her down low strategy to win the challenge via the last woman standing rule. Both Julia and Caleb are neck and neck for last place, as MK rolls down the hill Sonic style. Ripper ends up utilizing his ass blast to try to destroy Priya, but misses and gets destroyed by a scary girl themed obstacle, which bulldozes him into the ground with a jackhammer. He is out. Caleb and Julia continue to verbally assault each other as they climb up the mountain. Priya targets Emily, charging at her like a bull against a matador. Shockingly, Z jumps in the way and bursts both his pinball and Priya's, saving Emily. Priya is so enraged that she ends up just walking away from the challenge, her face red. Z yells for Emily to RUN, while Damien runs up on her and MK continues to sit in the corner. Damien chases her around long enough for Julia and Caleb to finally deposit their coins. Julia lets Caleb go first, which he foolishly accepts, heading down with a vengeance to look for MK. He notices Priya is out, and a rush of guilt and panic fills him before Julia comes from behind and immediately bursts his bubble. Oops! Damien, still chasing Emily, doesn't see Julia coming from the side and gets bounced around with ease against a duncan themed obstacle, bouncing between their kissing lips until he pops. Emily, Julia, and MK remain, and the two villain chicks are quick to gang up on and destroy Emily, earning them double immunity after bouncing her into an Izzy-themed obstacle's mouth. Z helps Emily up, who is shocked that he saved her. She pulls him in for a kiss, and this time he kisses back. When she asks why he saved her, he thinks about it and says, Chase would have wanted me to? Emily twitches and pushes him away, telling him she needs to do some thinking. Z calls out for her and in a confessional admits he likes Emily, but that he really shouldn't. Caleb tries to explain to Priya at dinner what he did and why. Priya tells him that it's too little, too late. He was busy distracting MK and Julia, when he should have been getting rid of Z. Caleb points out that Z has quite literally never been a threat, and a big fight erupts between them, leading to Priya stating that if he wants to be helpful, he can vote himself out. Caleb slumps and walks away. At the elimination ceremony, Caleb announces that he voted himself out, and gets on his knees to beg for Priya to at least forgive him. Priya gives him a look, then shakes her head. Chef reveals the votes, and Chris announces that, surprise surprise, it's a lover's vacation to Loserville, as both Priya and Caleb got the most votes this time. Priya explodes. After everything, I lose to a double elimination? Because of Z and some boy who didn't even really like me? I, I do like you. Now I do. You knew my trust in people was already below the ground floor. Heck, I had to move away from my parents and in with Millie because they wanted to keep my million dollars all to themselves. And you tried to turn me against the only person I ever trusted for what? Money? When I get home, I'm spending as much of that money as I can. And then, next season, I won't be falling for any tricks. I'm going to be a villain, THE total drama villain, the scariest, most meanest, most harshest this show has ever seen! Priya, please! Chef carts the raving girl and her desperate frenemy to the dock, where they're picked up by two drones and argue all the way home. Episode 9 The next episode starts with Damien waking Ripper up in a panic. He shows him a note he received from an anonymous source that reads, I know you have the immunity idol! He asks if Ripper told anybody, and he replies that, No way would I ever expose my good luck charm like that. You and I are going to the finale, and that immunity idol is the golden ticket there. 
Damien asks if he's sure he never let it slip on accident, to which Ripper levels with Damien and says that years of living with abusive parents have made him great at hiding his inner feelings, desires, and crimes. Damien just feels bad now. Still, now they'll have to hide the immunity idol somewhere special. I know! Under my hat! Ripper wonders if that's stable enough. Damien superglues his hat to his hair. Now it is. Julia finds Emily at the beach, contemplating her relationship with Z and her morals. She always felt like she was the sweet girl everyone could rely on, but maybe Chase has rubbed off on her more than she'd like to admit. Maybe she should stay single for a little while longer. Julia taps Emily on the shoulder, who is immediately suspicious of the previous season's villain. Julia admits that she's been a manipulator in the past and a rotten player now, but she has something that Emily might want to see. She rolls her eyes and simply asks her what it is. Oh, just a letter Chase gave me that he told me to give you as soon as I could. Emily is suspicious. Why didn't you give it to me after he got eliminated? And since when does Chase write letters? Does it look like I know your boyfriend? And I waited because, well, I wanted to hold it in case I ever needed you as an ally. Is that what this is about? Some alliance proposition? Look, I don't care if I get you as an extra vote, I can take care of myself. Just take the stupid letter, it's taking up space in my luggage. Taking the letter, Emily opens it to find a forged letter written by Julia, who researched Chase's handwriting by watching some of his videos. The note is a heartfelt, loving, and pleading apology from the YouTuber, one that strikes a chord with Emily. Meanwhile, MK gets Z alone after he uses the bathroom, telling him that if he wants to make Emily happy and keep his friendship with Chase, he has to reunite them. He isn't sure, because Emily doesn't really want to be with Chase, and he kinda likes Emily. MK assures him, You two wouldn't last as a couple anyways. You're just not lavish enough for her. And besides, she says you're lazy behind your back. Z admits, I am pretty lazy. So that makes sense. MK rations that she should be with her real true love or whatever. Z shrugs and says he'll see what he can do. He figures that at least now things won't be as complicated. Julia and MK share a confessional talking about their plan to split up this growing alliance before it becomes an issue so Julia can focus on taking out Ripper. Julia also mentions that she woke up today with a paper that says, I know you have the immunity idol, when she so obviously doesn't. <laughs> nice try, Ripper. Not getting a fast one on me. While Z is being sort of sad and trying to think of what to say to Emily, Damien and Ripper approach him, with Ripper looking to help out his bro after Damien helped him get back on his feet. Z tells him about how he was going to betray the bro code when MK gave him this great speech. Damien says that he's doing the right thing, he thinks. Ripper states that he isn't, and that he's learned from being with Axel that ripping apart his true love is going to sting him just as bad as it stings Chase. Z, even more conflicted, rushes off to take the pressure off with some, uh, rolls. Only for Chris to call for challenge time. Raj is the first camper at the challenge site, surprising Chris and Chef. The others arrive shortly after, and the challenge remains the same as in canon. The challenge itself is unimportant, just know that MK ends up being the winner for delivering and picking apart the car before anyone else. I wouldn't have anyone break yachts with their bare hands either. That is ridiculous. Julia and MK work together separately in this challenge, with Julia continuing to underestimate MK's abilities in confessionals. Meanwhile, Damien struggles with killing his sheep friend, while Ripper's soft side comes out and he decides to drop everything to help him shear the poor sheep down, going into a story about how his parents put his dog down without even telling him. He'll never let another animal die for nothing, unless they're going in my stomach! Damien is touched and the two grow closer. Z is having a quote-unquote sugar high from drinking a lax soda, and Emily notices. He's laid back, barely trying in the challenge, and when Emily tells him he should or else he risks elimination, Z shrugs and says that money is nothing compared to the odd natural love I have to give up on. Emily feels bad, but tells Z that Chase wrote to her and she thinks that she's making a mistake. Z sighs, but just shrugs and tells her that that's the way it is. She looks sad and wishes him good luck before continuing to try and break down the confessional outhouse. Z is the clear loser of the challenge. After the challenge, MK eavesdrops on the dudes, trying to listen out if any of them have the immunity idol. Emily is sad, Z is sad, and she doubts either of them have the idol anyways. Damien is panicked, and Ripper is trying to calm him down. 
MK smirks, realizing what's going on. She nearly tells Julia that she knows Damien has the idol, but catches herself. Julia was the one thing standing in her way last season. If she gets rid of her now, what did these losers have to worry about her for? So she tells her that she found out Raj has it instead. Julia believes her, confessing that MK is like a puppy at this point, eager to please. I wouldn't be surprised if she was crushing on me or something. So at the elimination ceremony, an anxious Damien looks around at his fellow campers while Ripper kicks him so he can stop his fidgeting. Emily confesses that she thinks she can make it to the final two this time, since nobody thinks of her as an enemy. Julia, cocky, waits for Raj to be called for elimination. She stands up before the voting process and tells everyone that Raj has the immunity idol. Confused, Raj says, No I don't. Unless I forgot I picked it up, which might be possible. He basically convinces himself, and everyone else, that he must have had the idol, because he also received a piece of paper that said that he had it. Damien, guilty, feels like speaking out, but before he can say anything, Ripper shoves his underwear in his mouth. Chris calls for voting time, and unsurprisingly, Raj gets all the votes. He tries to find the idol, but alas, there's nothing. He shrugs and apologizes to Chris for losing it before heading to the dock and getting sent home. Julia is confused, skeptical even, but only asks MK one question. How did you know? MK shrugs and says, lucky guess. Someone else must have left those notes. Episode 10. In the next episode, Julia is scared. Not fearful or anything, but incredibly nervous that she's neck to go since MK is acting so strange. She has to win this next challenge, whatever it is, and find that idol that Raj dropped. She searches the guy's cabin while the guys are in the bathroom, while MK lays back in her bed and enjoys her relaxation. From this point on, all she has to do is make sure Julia loses this challenge. Sure, it's gonna be sad seeing her go, somewhat, but seeing that million dollars go would be even sadder. Ripper makes a proclamation to Z and Damien. He realized that Axel was holding him back, that love made him pathetic, just like all of his inspirational social media influencers said. Damien says he was making such good progress though. He didn't even bring up the alpha male crap at all. Ripper says that he was getting weaker, clearly. Now he's with the dudes and he feels like a real man again. Axel didn't even care that she was leaving me forever, so screw her. Z says that, Axel probably only acted that way because she was performing a knee-jerk reaction to a traumatic situation that neither of you were prepared for, and that you probably just need to talk things out and everything will be all good. Damien asks Z where he learned to talk like that, and Z shows him a book Chef let him borrow about the psychology of love. He's been reading it to prepare his confession to Emily. Apparently, Chase really was an abusive boyfriend. This revelation invents a new Z, Smart Z, who then goes on to proclaim his feelings for a downtrodden looking Emily, reading Chase's love now. With stunning vocabulary, incredible heartfelt diction, and a look in his eyes that screams love, he's able to get her to drop the note and fall into his arms, proclaiming that she's so happy to be with him. Ripper and Damien watch from afar, impressed. Ripper rolls his eyes and says, Z's just appealing to the agenda. What agenda? Before Ripper can explain himself, Chris calls for the challenge to begin. Remember that shitty challenge from this episode where the rules are insanely confusing and the challenge itself is pretty boring? And remember the following episode with its phobia factor if it suck challenge? Instead of using either of those, let's just do I Triple Dog Dare You from Island. Seeing the reboot characters do dares from their eliminated campers would be a lot of fun. The rules are slightly different this time, as this is not a purge challenge. Instead, whoever does the most dares wins immunity. Damien's lax attitude throughout the challenge and refusal to do several disgusting dares nets some suspicion from Julia, who immediately figures out that Damien has the idol. She tries to tell MK, but stops herself, and realizes that this information is crucial. This is what will help her take down MK. The episode is filled with mainly gross-out humor and some classic TD shock humor that is sorely missed in the reboot depending on who you ask. No, not much farting, but plenty of disgusting armpit licking and rotten food eating. It comes down to the wire, with Emily and Z constantly taking dares for each other and thus being the team to beat, tied with the highest score. Ripper and Julia are also up there, though Ripper only refused one dare, kiss the person next to you, who happened to be Julia or Damien. When Ripper lands on Axel's dare, he rolls his eyes while his heart skips a beat. 
The dare is to tell everyone how you really feel right now. Ripper breaks down crying, admitting he hates hating her and wants her back because he's never felt so strongly about a woman who hurt him so much. Damien helps him back to his seat, comforting him. This gives him the edge he needs in making sure Julia can't outplace him, while Z and Emily tie for immunity when their dare is to bungee jump over shark infested waters. They do it together, sealing the whole thing off with a really sweet kiss. Julia asks MK if they're cool because things have been feeling off between them lately. MK says, Of course we're good. Why, what's up? Oh, nothing. I was just concerned, you know? Last season, you did try to one-up one of my strategies and get me kicked off the show, so... Yeah, I think I'm in my right. Uh, okay, dude. Weirdness aside, I'm just gonna say, let's vote off Ripper and make sure we can stay in the game, okay? Yeah, sure. Let's do that. But of course, Julia doesn't vote Ripper. She votes MK. MK knows this. She also knows that Julia has the biggest target on her back right now. Julia tries to convince Z and Emily to vote Ripper, but Z vouches for him and Emily accuses Julia of being a bad person. Frustrated, Julia heads to the confessional and actually tries to pull a herald by rigging the votes. Chris catches it and not wanting to risk a lawsuit, asks for everyone to vote publicly instead. Ripper states that Julia is the biggest threat in the game, obviously. Emily and Z parrot this, and Damien says he's more concerned about Mary-Kate. She keeps giving him funny looks. Julia agrees and says, Yeah, vote MK. She's super sus. Nobody believes her and Damien immediately switches his vote. MK is the last vote, and she of course tells Julia that she played a good game, but she's toast. Before she goes, MK whispers, By the way, I know who really has the immunity idol. This is for season one, baby. Then waves her goodbye. Julia scoffs, frustrated she let a little rat like MK play her so hard. She goes out raving about how much of a loser MK is, while MK replies with, Aww, I'll miss you too, tauntingly. Episode 11. The next morning, Ripper is drawing something on a huge piece of paper at breakfast. Damien enters and asks, what's up with the project? Ripper tells him that he's going to dedicate his performance in this episode to his doomsday planning Picasso, with an art project of his own glued to his body. Damien can't help but laugh at the ridiculousness of his friend before MK comes in. Damien immediately gets nervous, while MK is clearly cocky about her chances. Good morning, dude bros. Damien decides to be upfront and friendly about everything, asking MK if she hates him or is plotting against him. MK says, nah, man, I barely even know you. You're just paranoid because you so obviously have the immunity idol. She snickers. Damien reels back before running to the bathroom to nervously puke his guts out, passing Z and Emily on his way out, holding hands. They sit down together, feeding each other chef's gross food. This food tastes like garbage, but it was made with love, wasn't it? Aww. Chef replies, no, it wasn't. It was made with rotten potatoes and kitchen grease. But hey, whatever helps you keep it down. Z proposes they take a walk instead. Emily is cool with that. Z makes a confessional stating that because Chase was a bad guy all along, he doesn't feel a twinge bad about what he's doing. Then he twitches. He clearly does feel bad. Emily makes a confessional talking about the romantic night she had with Z, but laments the part where she called out Chase instead of his actual name. The challenge begins, and I'm going to hold off MacArthur's challenge for the next episode because I think doing the lame phobia factor challenge here works better. Chris reminds the cast of a slip they signed talking about their greatest fears. Damien's fear of rejection, Ripper's fear of isolation, Z's fear of letting his friends down, Emily's fear of ghosts, and MK's fear of solitary confinement. As he exposes all of these fears, he presses several buttons. Damien gets lifted by the Drone of Shame into a sheep pen, where the sheep he saved two episodes ago is living with its family. It doesn't seem to remember Damien, despite their bond, hypnotized by Chef into forgetting that day. It's Damien's challenge to remind the sheep of who he is, or walk away from the sheep with it never remembering who he is. Of course, Damien loves the sheep far too much to just give up on it. The floor from underneath Ripper gives out and he's plummeted into a deep, dark, metallic factory established in the dank center of New Wawanakwa. Nobody is here. There's a stairway that leads upstairs to the surface that if Ripper takes, he'll be automatically eliminated. Yes, today's challenge is a purge challenge. 
However, if Ripper stays in this confined space for three hours, he'll make it out of the challenge unscathed. Z is launched by a spring into a boxing ring, where Chef tosses some boxing gloves to him. Right across from him, Chase, a furious look on his face and his fists up. You're dating Emily now, huh bro? That's cool, whatever. Violates the bro code, but you're about to taste the pain live on my new hit series, Boxing People for Views. Helicopters fly above Chase and a very nervous Z. Chase, man, it's not like that, come on. Z's shown some confessionals proving it very much so is like that. Z's challenge is to beat Chase in a fight. Z is super conflicted, so Chase gets a good first strike in. MK has a metal box thrown on top of her, a long, gray confinement that resembles a solitary cell block. She pounds on the bars, trying to get out. Chris states that MK's challenge is rather simple. Survive three hours in the box without checking her phone or falling asleep. With that in mind, he uses a vacuum to suck up any fidget toys she has on hand. MK claws at the bars, desperate for stimulation before Chris walks up to Emily, his hands on her shoulders. As for you, Emily, there's someone who'd like to say hi. Emily is thrown into the boathouse from basic straining before a quote-unquote ghost appears before her. It's really a complex mix of actor, CGI, and lighting that makes it look like Emily's ghost dad is haunting her. Her challenge is to either hug the ghost or stay in the boathouse for three hours without running away. Damien manages to problem solve the sheep issue, the power of his undying love for the animal he saved driving him to bring its memory back. That is, after getting crushed and eaten by several of its family members. It's only when Damien brandishes a shear to defend himself from the onslaught that the sheep finally remembers him and jumps to defend him from its brethren. Damien is bowed down to and he celebrates by maniacally laughing. Emily is incredibly scared at first, confessing about the time Chase pretended to be her ghost dad a week after his funeral. Her and her dad had an extremely special relationship, but seeing him again as a cold, brightly colored corpse ruined her perception of him forever. Shaking in a corner as he hobbles closer, she realizes she has no choice and kicks him in the knee. Predictably, it does nothing. She begs for him not to hurt her before she hears him speak. It's okay, Emily. You shouldn't hold on to my image this way. Remember the good times. Emily cries, unsure of how to react. She asks if he's real, and he admits that he died a long time ago. But the real him lives on within her. The intern playing her dad just felt really bad for her. Emily goes in for the hug, and securely wins the challenge. Chase kicks Z around for a while as he tries to ration with him. Chase is enjoying this way too much, lashing out that Z betrayed him and went behind his back to mess around with his girlfriend. That's when Z snaps and fights back, getting a good few punches in, confessing that he knows what he did to Emily and she deserves someone better. Emily is there to watch them fight now, rooting for Z, then Chase, then Z again as they both spill their guts out over her. She admits nobody has ever fought over her before and she feels kind of psyched about it. She knows she shouldn't, but she just can't help it. Meanwhile, Ripper struggles to breathe under these cripplingly lonely conditions, trying to remember his Nana's treatment for anxiety, and then he starts to sing to himself. It's quiet, somewhat mature for the show, confident that the emotion can carry itself without relying on comedy. Afterward, he feels a little better and continues his drawing from earlier, soft murmurs of yelling going through his head slowly fading as he forgets all about his mom, dad, and Axel. MK isn't so lucky. Within half an hour, she's pacing around, going absolutely insane. She frequently pulls her phone up, catches herself, and eventually throws it out of the bars. Though she's a manic mess by the end of three hours, both her and Ripper make it out in time to watch the end of Z and Chase's fight. Z admits that he just wants everyone to be happy, to which Chase responds that he never wanted them to be enemies. Z replies that he knows how much love hurts now and that he's sorry for trampling his heart. Chase forgives him, telling him that Emily isn't worth all of this. That's when Z socks him in the chin. Take it back. I mean, no girl is worth fighting for. Th this is stupid. I love her, man, but I love you too. Z drops his fists and falls to his knees. This fighting is so not me. I give up. Emily, I'm sorry. We are no more. Emily is heartbroken, begging Z to get back up for her. Chase and Z exchange a look. Guilt is all over Chase's face. He stands up tall and tells Emily that he's sorry. 
He makes a speech that at first seems manipulative and scummy, but quickly turns to Chase revealing that no matter where he goes or what he does or who he hooks up with, none of them are her and that hurts more than anything else. He understands if she wants to stay with Z, and he's sorry for both of them. Emily tells Chase to come down, and as Z gets up with his head held low, he watches them hug and smiles. Emily tells Chase she's willing to be friends again. Just friends. They'll see where they go from there. Chase is more than happy for that. Z gives Emily a thumbs up and she smiles at him sincerely. At the elimination ceremony, Chris eliminates Z. Before he goes, Emily asks Z if they're still friends, to which Z says, Of course! I still really like you, man, even if we can't be together. It's all good with me. Emily smiles and gives him one last kiss on the cheek before he gets sent away. Damien asks Ripper how the art project went, and Ripper shows it off on his stomach. A mural for Axel and himself. Because above anyone else, he respects himself now. Damien says he's proud of him. Episode 12 begins with MK in the girl's cabin, obsessively plotting on her phone a plan that we can't see. All the while, Emily gushes about her new friendship with Chase and Z, and how liberated she feels to be single and yet accompanied by them. She's basically speaking into the void though, as MK doesn't really care at all. Meanwhile, Ripper and Damien bond as the final two boys, knocking back Z's leftover sodas and, drunkily, confining in each other and how much they love one another. This challenge remains the same as the MacArthur Dog Challenge in canon, and focuses more on the comedy than the strategizing or character building. After that last heavy episode, I think we could use a comedic episode. MK does tell us her plan in a confessional to get Emily against Ripper to force him out of the game, since he's the bigger threat between the two. Plus, if Ripper gets the most votes, Damien's idol will be useless with the finale being next episode. She runs to spy Emily as they're running away from the dogs, and Emily shrugs, telling her that she has a point and she'll vote Ripper as long as she gets to watch MK vote so no funny business occurs. MK assures her she's making the right choice, and that she'll see her in the final three. Now all she has to do is win immunity. Ripper and Damien stick close together, but because of Ripper's musk, the dogs are easily able to find him. He sacrifices himself to save Damien, getting one strike against him. Damien doesn't make it much farther though, and also ends up dragged off by dogs after trying to get away. MK manages to play stealthily enough to avoid detection for the entire challenge, only getting found once when she accidentally steps on a squeaker toy left by MacArthur. The first eliminated is Emily, who can't help but find the dogs adorable despite their killer looks. Then Ripper, who is too slow and smelly to avoid them for long. It comes down to Damien and MK, but unfortunately for Damien, the soda he drank earlier makes his hands smell strongly enough to give away his hiding spot. MK wins immunity, stoked that her plan is going off without a hitch. Ripper and Damien vote Emily, because of course they do, and Emily realizes this, so she's dead set on voting off Ripper now. Still, nervous, Damien gets ready to play the idol under his hat. At the elimination ceremony, it's revealed that there's been a tie. Ripper has two votes, and Emily has two votes. Damien is shocked he didn't even have to use his idol, while Emily is nervous about doing a tiebreaker against Ripper. Ripper is pumped, egging Chris on to reveal the challenge already, but Chris states he doesn't have one planned. Instead, he's going to go for a revo. This time, MK tells Emily to vote off Damien. Emily isn't sure, but MK assures her she can trust her. Emily shrugs, doing as told. One vote Ripper, one vote Damien. Ripper votes Emily. Damien gets spooked in the confessional when MK walks in on him purposely, accidentally marking Ripper for elimination. He rushes out and tells Chris they need to vote again because he voted for the wrong person. Instead, Chris tells him that he's just going to have to live with it, that there's nothing more he can do and that Ripper is eliminated with two votes. MK sighs, wiping sweat from her brow nervously. Ripper is sad. His best friend voted him off? He sighs and picks up his luggage, heading for the dock. Gil eats away at Damien before he pulls his hat off, revealing the immunity idol. Wait! Ripper can have my immunity idol. R really Ripper is absolutely touched. You do realize we'll just be tied up again, right? Chris questions. Just do rock, paper, scissors or something. I can face Emily no problem. Damien replies. Emily smirks. She always beat Chase at rock, paper, scissors. Best two out of three, Emily wins the first round, followed by Damien winning the second. However, at the end, Emily emerges victorious, doing a victory dance. 
Damien looks sad, but says he should have expected that after being so cocky. Ripper tells Damien that when he wins, he's splitting the money with them. They'll both be rich. Damien smiles and hugs Ripper, despite the smell, thanking him. Episode 13. The final challenge is perfect. I wouldn't change a single detail about it. The episode begins with MK eating breakfast alone before Ripper comes up to her face and tells her she's his mortal enemy, and he's going to destroy her this challenge. All while Emily watches from her table, on top of the world. MK laughs in his face, telling him that though she didn't really plan on Damien going home, you're going to be easier to crush than a sad little walking stick. Emily is just excited to be in the finale of a reality show, especially after everything she's been through. She says she wants to use the money to donate to all of those charities she mentioned last season, 15% of course. Then she's going to buy herself a rescue dog and give it the perfect home in her mansion. During the challenge, Team Emily consists of Nichelle, Chase, Z, Millie, Priya, and Caleb, the latter of which are still feuding, but now an actual couple. Millie tries to calm Priya down constantly, while Caleb is practically her whipping boy. Priya really let herself go, and is living vicariously through Emily, on her about winning the competition. Team Ripper consists of Wayne, Raj, Bowie, Damien, and Axel, with Axel apologizing for her behavior and admitting that it was immature of her to blame Ripper for their loss, when MK was the one who got her eliminated. So let's crush that little pipsqueak, baby! Oh, I missed you so much, babe! Me too. And now they can make out. At last, earning an ew from their friends. Bowie agrees, saying that MK and Julia need to go down, while the hockey bros don't want anyone cheating in this thing at all, and hope Ripper does everything as clean as possible. They're mainly siding with him because, well, team spirit and all. Lastly, Team MK consists of Julia. That's it. Julia says she's still mad at MK for what she did to her, but realizes she made a decent move and wants her to win the million only because everyone else sucks. Well, Lauren's there too, but Julia is staying far away from that basket case. The challenge begins, with MK having the worst time possible despite having the least amount of contestants in her carriage, because she has noodle legs and low stamina. Meanwhile, Ripper is soaring past everyone in first place, and Emily is struggling in second with the biggest team. Priya uses a literal whip to get her to mush faster, reminiscent of Courtney and Heather from World Tour. Emily loses Chase and Z when they go grab the pizza distraction, as well as Ripper losing Wayne and Raj. It's a weight off their backs, but Emily feels the need to wait for them while Ripper rubs it in her face that Chris said nothing about pulling teammates to the mountain, only team wagons! He laughs in her face along with Axel. Bowie jumps off too to go and retrieve his boys regardless. MK catches up and manages to get second place now, with Emily in last. Ripper makes it to the mountain first, departing to climb the tightrope. Emily and MK are hot on his trail though, and Lauren is waiting for all of them, armed with a t-shirt cannon to dispel all finalists from making it up the mountain. MK manages to sneak her way past while Julia takes the abuse, and by the time MK is on top of the mountain, Lauren allows her to pass, only to shoot her off the tightrope as revenge for getting her eliminated. Immediately after, Axel grabs Lauren by the legs and twirls her around before hurling her off the ledge into the water, commanding Ripper to go. Emily's team is gorilla in their tactics to shoot Ripper before he can get on the tightrope though, and Millie even uses a strategy she learned from Cameron to pin down Axel before she can do too much damage. Axel is strong enough to force her up, but now Emily is in the lead, halfway across the tightrope. Ripper uses his last resort, his final flash. He blasts the contestants behind him in the face, it's a part of his character, I'm sorry, get over it, before jumping onto the tightrope and climbing behind Emily. Amid the blast, MK sneaks her way underneath the smoke and gets helped up by Julia onto the rope. Julia fights off whoever she can, including punching Bowie's lights out like how he broke her nose, while MK makes it to the end of the rope along with the other two. They're all tied up now, with everyone retreating to wait for them at the completion circle. Putting on their wingsuits, they glide off of the cliff, with Ripper and Emily crushing MK between them, both fuming at each other as they laser in on the dock. However, MK is able to lose some air so they bash into each other, saving herself temporarily before she crashes into a tree, falling down every single branch until she falls into a small lake, her phone buzzing and spazzing as she frantically tries to get it to work to no avail. It's broken. Julia finds her and they bury her now dead phone together. MK more than aware that she's lost when Ripper and Emily are coming in hot at the finish line. Still, Julia tells her that it's better to have tried than to not and have failed. 
or something. MK laughs at her and calls her Mulo like she did in season 1 before Julia rolls her eyes and shoves her out there. MK makes a run for it, looking back to see Julia cheering her on. But of course, MK is knocked out when Ripper soars into the dock of shame and wins first place with Emily in second. Ripper had an entire arc building up to this moment, while MK was the villain of the season. MK wasn't just evil for the sake of evil though, she was supposed to come off as a survivor in a world of predators, cunning prey who could turn the tables, almost an anti-villain. Unlike Heather or Julia, it's not unrealistic to anticipate a win from her. In a perfect world, she has an alternative ending. Meanwhile, Emily, while she had an arc, had it already wrapped up by the end of the season, and thus I feel her losing just barely makes sense. Either way, at the end of the season, Ripper splits the case with Damien and tells Axel he's going to show her how beautiful the world is by bringing her to his home country of Italy. We don't need to prepare for Doomsday. We've got our whole lives ahead of us. Chris closes out the season as the two gross lovers kiss in the background, telling you, the audience, to anticipate more. Total. Drama. Island. Thank you for watching, that took a million fucking years. I think I've been writing this for two months now. Ever since the reboot ended, really, I've been writing this. Thank you, Battery Saver. You see, that's how long I've been doing this. Um, <laughs> so I wrote this for two months. Ever since the Unscripted Thoughts video came out, I started writing it. From every idea, headcanon, whatnot I had from the reboot season two, all of my disappointments from it. Uh, special thanks to Autumn Plains. She was very very helpful in determining stuff like how the immunity idol is played we had a lot of great discussions about that and um special thanks to I, I i don't know me special thanks to me because this took forever and i wrote it all by myself the doc comes out to about 26 pages and um yeah i've been recording this for an entire day it took me two months to write it all it's just Thank you for watching. That's that's all I really want to say. Thank you so much for watching it all and for bearing with me. Um, and yeah, I, I, I want to hear what you guys think about the rewrite and if you liked it and if it was good to you, what you would have changed, what you wouldn't have changed, etc., etc. I love receiving feedback. So go ahead and comment. And I am going to go and take a shower. Thank you and good night. Oh, and I'm under your covers or something, whatever I say.